Hey everybody, today we're going to be showing you how to fix the sticky buttons on your Elite One controller. This is the best fix that we found. We don't want to waste your time. Let's get you back to gaming. Let's go. Alright, so let's go over the things we're going to need. Obviously, we're going to need a Elite One controller. As you can see, I have mine here. And then we are going to need a pry tool. Doesn't matter what kind of pry tool, guys. Let's just make sure that it's thin enough to fit behind the triggers. And then you are going to need a T8 screwdriver. It's a little bit of a bigger star bit. And then you're also going to need a T6 screwdriver. This is going to be for all the inside screws past getting through the shell here. And then obviously you guys will need a alcohol prep pad or alcohol wipe, whatever you want to call it. You'll need that. That's how we're going to clean the buttons. And then a microfiber cloth, guys. This is just basically going to be to wipe the controller down after and just so we can get our pry tool in behind the triggers without damaging anything. That's kind of what we'll do with it. So turn around your Elite One controller, pop up the back panel, and take your pry tool and go ahead and just peel that label back. Once you have that label peeled back, we're going to take the T8 screwdriver and let's release that screw behind the sticker here and just keep those all in a pile together. Take your pry tool, kind of wrap it in here, try and get it into a thinner type layer and then put it right in behind these triggers like so and just give it a little flick of the wrist. Do the other side as well. Okay. Now we can put these over here and we won't really be needing that anymore. Um, let's go ahead and I'll show you guys. We're going to take out these four screws. You have one here. You have one here. Also down here as well. And one is right there. Yep. So let's go ahead and remove those now. Sometimes these top two, because it's magnetic um, behind the triggers, they will get kind of stuck. So sometimes I have to use the pry tool and just pick those out, but it's not too big of a deal. They came out easy for me today. I always like that. Take out these bottom two. Okay, one second, there we go. A little tight, they'll come out. Just give it a little bit of force. And there we go. Now we will take off the front shell, which you'll have to remove these first. Oops. And then just go ahead, guys, pop off that front shell. All right, there we go. Now you guys can see we've gotten this far. We're just going to take this pry tool and we're going to pop up these bumpers right here. Um, they get a little bit stuck sometimes, so just give them a little bit of force. But you'll just kind of pop them up. And then on the sides, you're going to see these are latched in as well. So go ahead and pop those up too. And that should make it a little easier. You can see those are a little loose now. So now we just need to get this middle piece and kind of just pry it up. There we go. That'll come right out. And go ahead and take your sync button as well and just remove that off to the side. Now guys, this is where it gets fun. Let's just pop this up like so. Sometimes it'll get a little bit jammed, but no problem. You'll just pop that out and you'll see that the ribbon cable actually come came off, you know, in that force. We'll try not to do that. There is a little clip back here. Let me show you. Right here, you can see that's where the ribbon cable goes. Guys, try not to pull it out like I just did, but you, you do want to end up taking it out, obviously, once you get to that point. So go ahead, put that back shell out of the way. Now we will show you guys how to get past this panel. Take your T6 screwdriver. And I'm going to show you really close. You have a screw down here and then you have one on this side. So let's go ahead and remove those now and be careful guys that your analog like motors, whatever they are, don't let them dangle too much because that would end up in if the red or black cable or any of the cables come unattached, you have to solder them back and that's just not a fun process. Take it from firsthand experience. I've had to do it. I've never really enjoyed that. So. Be careful, keep them kind of secure, don't let them hang. Okay, now that we got those two screws out, we're just gonna have to wiggle this panel a little bit. Sometimes it can be, it can feel like it's stuck. If that's the case, sometimes it's just the, I'll show you guys. Sometimes it's just this piece 
right here kind of hooking on things. So kind of move it around, get it comfortable. I might even go ahead and just remove mine. If you guys want to do the same, as you can see right here, my 3.5 uh, millimeter jack fell out as well. That's okay. It's easy to put back. Just kind of put it off to the side. There we go. So now you can see it's a lot easier to pull that panel up a little bit now that I took that out of the way. But we're actually not going to pull this too far. We're just going to move this off to the side a little bit. Um, be careful with stretching the cords again once, once again. Here we go. And I'm going to show you guys, try and show you up close. As you can see back here, guys, we have a bunch of screws. We have one here, one over there, we got one right there, and then we have two down in these corners. So I'll try and show you guys as I go. I'm going to go ahead and remove the ones you guys can see. And these can go right in the same pile as the first two, same size. Take this one out. Guys, it helps having a magnetic screwdriver. I'll tell you what, it's, it's a joy. If, if you don't have one, get one for this process because it definitely helps. Okay, so now that we have those three out of the way, I'm gonna kind of prop this panel forward so I can show you that we have another screw right down here. And we're actually gonna have one in this corner right here as well. If you guys can see that, let it focus. There we go. So go ahead and let's remove those two screws now. There we go. Move the other side. Pretty simple so far, guys. Nothing too crazy. Just, you know, being careful, making sure you don't rip anything is, is key to this process. So now that we have those out, go ahead and just take that panel, give it a little pull. Kind of, you might have to play with it a little bit. You'll get it. And I'm actually realizing right now I had another screw hiding. So I'm going to show you guys this one. This one right dead center here. Don't forget any screws. If it feels a little tight and it feels like it's not coming out, make sure you check and get those other screws out of the way. You don't want to break anything. So let's take that one. There we go. That should be the last one. As you can see, that comes out pretty nice. Just kind of lift this up and shimmy it out. Here you go, guys. As you can see, it's off. Not too difficult. Okay, now that we've gotten through the final panel you'll see right here we have this rubber holder put that off to the side and then this is where you just got to clean it guys so i'm going to go ahead and kind of going to make a mess here i'm just going to dump the buttons right out because we're going to clean all those spaces now that we have those out of the way let's just put them in a little bit of a pile there we go Okay, so guys, take your alcohol wipe, pop that open, toss that off to the side, and just kind of bunch it up, kind of like this, you know. You guys will know. Just You just want it to be able to fit in between the buttons. I like to turn it around this way. It's a little bit easier to see. And just kind of go in there and clean all those spaces. If you guys have sticky controllers and this is why you're doing it, obviously you'll feel how sticky it is, so... Just try and clean those until there is no more stick left. There we go. Clean these spaces. Clean in here. Kind of try and fit it into these small holes as well if that's where you're having a problem. And then that is pretty much it, guys. You can also, for a little extra step if you're feeling it, to make sure there, you get rid of all of the stickiness, just take every button and one through one, I mean, one by one, just go right through them and clean them off. There we go. And just this last one here. And guys, if you're liking these videos and these are helping you, um, let us know, you know, subscribe, hit like. We're just trying to help you guys get some fixing done maybe save you guys a little bit of money. Oop, I forgot my B button. And we like doing it as well, so we like having fun with it. We're here to help. So let's go ahead and put these buttons back in. This is where it can get a little bit difficult. I'm gonna try and make some room here. And all of these go back, obviously, 
only in one spot. They have little notches on them, so they fit perfectly. So just kind of move them around until you find the correct spots. Okay guys, now that I got all those buttons in there, let's take our rubber pad and just cover up those spots. And then we will take our panel again and let's just slide that back into place. Everything lines up perfect. There we go. So once I get that in guys, I like to actually put in one screw too, just so I'm not having such a hard time. Let's just go ahead and put the middle one back in. And I'll let you guys take a see, take a look. I mean, so you can see, guys, I just put one back in there just to hold everything down. And I'm going to start by putting all the screws in, and then I'll just remind you guys of the locations. So bear with me here. Okay, so let me show you where all of those were. Flip that back up and around here. So we had one here, one right here, one right there, and then we had the two that were kind of hidden down in here. So let me show you this one. Remember, this does matter, guys. See where I put this one? Leave that hole open because that obviously is for this panel here. We'll need that space. And then we had just one last one. It was right there. So that's all the locations. And now we can kind of plant this back down and grab your 3.5 millimeter jack and put it back in. And it only fits one way, just, just like most things in this, it fits one certain way. So it will lock right in. And then let's just finish putting these screws back. Get this secured in this corner over here. All right, perfect. So just to, so you guys can see it up close, we had that screw right there and we had that screw right there. Okay, so that's looking good. We can flip this this way. Just wanna give everything a test. And I'm gonna put my analog stick back on now. There we go. Make sure it clicks. Great. Okay, now Let's get those bumpers back. You're gonna take your sync button and let's see if I can kind of show you a little bit better. You can see how it's on this side on the, let me see, there we go. So you can see you want it on the back end. That's how you know it's on the correct side. And you'll see in a second, you'll slide it into this location right here. There's this little spot. You just want your tab to slide in there and it'll, it'll make it so it stays right in place, guys. And then obviously that little plastic notch I was telling you you want in the back, that's for clicking the, the sync button. And it doesn't stay in that well until obviously you put the casing on. So just, you know, try and keep it as steady as you can. And then we will get right to the bumpers. And these can be a little tricky. You wanna just move them around until you find the right spot. There we go. I heard that lock in place. Something's out of. Okay, so I can see that I got one side in, but one side not so much. Let's just try and move it around. We might have to pop it back up and just readjust this side a little bit. That happens time to time, guys. It's not gonna be perfect all the time. It does take a little bit of effort. over here oh and if you have to you know kind of look at the other side try to replicate that process I might have to take this completely back off because it is not clicking
Yep. I'm going to have to take this back off just so I can show you. This does happen to everybody. I've done a bunch of these. So, you know, don't worry if it's a little bit wrong at first or a little bit messed up at first. You can always fix it. Make sure that sync button's good. Let's just try and gently line this up. You guys are getting some really good examples of how it can be a little bit tedious. So bear with me. Okay. That's backwards. <laughs> Give it a little bit of force. Slide it down. There we go. There we go. That looks a lot better. As you can see, or even here, guys, it clicks. It's looking good. Great. Whew. All right. So now we want to get it back in here. We're going to take our ribbon cable. And let's go ahead and reattach that now. Kind of pop this flap up. Let me show you guys. You're going to want to take this black little flap right here and pop that up too difficult and then you're going to want to just take that ribbon cable and I'll show you once I get it in there you're gonna to want to take that ribbon cable and just put it in the side right here you're gonna to want to put it in this side right here and it'll slide right in and then you'll shut that black little lot uh, I guess call it a latch and it'll latch it down and then we are all good to go so do that now. Perfect. I got mine. As you can see, you just plug it in right there and latch it. Set it back in the controller, guys. Hold down on your triggers and try and replace it back inside the controller. Make sure everything is clicking OK. That kind of gives you a solid indication that everything's going back together smoothly. Kind of prop this up here. There we go. Perfect. Everything is working. Now we take our front shell, push that down. Oh, actually, don't forget this piece too. If this fell out on yours, guys, this is the switch in the middle. Just go ahead and put that back where it needs to go. Give it a couple clicks. Make sure that you have it in correctly. And now put your shell on. And we'll turn it around, pull that label back, and let's put a screw in there so we don't have any more problems. Lock it in, and it makes everything a lot easier when you go to do the other screws. Okay, put that tab down. Perfect. Okay. All right, guys, so now we got that one behind the plate in there, that screw behind the plate in there. Let's put in these last four. I'm just gonna show you where to go, guys, and then we will kind of speed up through it together. So you have one up here, one over here, down here on this side, and down here on this side. So go ahead and put those back now. Okay, guys, now we can go put our analog sticks back on put this back on the d-pad turn it around put your back plate back on and now all we have to do is take our side panels clip those down all right guys so there it is we've done it check the buttons make sure it's good make sure everything is working feeling better now that those sticky buttons are out of the way you and actually guys i forgot to mention throughout this whole video if you wanted to clean the analog sticks as well whatever was sticky um, make sure you get all of it inside the controller there was a couple spots along the way that you know you saw when we took out the analog sticks you could have cleaned up in there so do that if you need to but for the most part this is how you do it it's 100 percent effective it gets rid of the sticky stuff and i hope it helps so we love doing these videos for you guys if you have any other videos you want to see about fixing anything let us know in the comments below don't forget to show us some love hit the like button and you know, subscribe guys, we got more fix it videos coming. We have more customizations. We're getting into other things. So stay tuned and let us know what you think. I'm Dylan, we're Gamenetics, come again.